ครับแฮร์รี่พอตเตอร์ is widely regarded as a seminal work of fiction and it was quite a big deal when I was younger and the books were still coming out I mean do you remember that spoilerific scandal of who kills who boo the last book was released in 2007 and the movie adaptation of the same in 2011 or the second half of which Admittedly, I didn't read the last few books, but it's been five years since that last movie, and in the decade less one since the book came out, the amount of material from the universe has slowly been eking its way by until the announcement of Pottermore, where thanks to the success of a quiz that everybody took and then forgot the password to continue after that, almost in a backdoor way, we've suddenly got this huge expansion to the lore and the universe leading up to. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them: Colon the Movie Film for Theaters, which should be coming out this November. The most recent additions to the ethos have been the general histories surrounding magical schools we've yet to hear about in Harry Potter, especially the American school, Ilvermorny. Ilvermorny. Sitting atop Mount Greylock in Massachusetts, Ilvermorny was founded in about 1630 by an Irish woman in Iceland and her non-magical husband James in the back of their house to teach two young boys that they adopted, so she wouldn't have to return to the homeland and risk being eviscerated by her fanatical Slytherin aunt. It's a little Cinderella meets Moses meets Jaden Smith School for the Smiths. It had to have four houses like Hogwarts because the boys. And I sold herself. Were enamored with stories of the original school. It was named after the cottage she was born in, and yada yada. A lot of backstory. Read it for yourself. <laughs> Link right there. Magical children were sent there, and by the 1800s, it had become an internationally renowned boarding school for magic in North America. I don't think it's just disappointment from waiting so long, or even a couple of uh, thought experiments. One might even call head cannons, so to say. I think it actually seems a little un-American. This new story, the idea behind a lot of these things, doesn't feel distinctly American in their presentation. Uh, for instance, coming from all the North American wizarding history we've been given, in a country founded on very modern political principles, the magical community is kind of closed up and doesn't interact with the outside world. According to this news story, kids even had to check their wands every summer until the mid '60s, probably due to the magical community's strict separation. Admittedly, there are parts of the Ilvermorny ideal that do seem very nice, like how one of the founders was a <clears throat> nomad, very democratic, which is great until contrasted with the isolationist ideals of the Mac USA from other writings. Unless that was meant as some kind of dig on American culture and tolerance, which makes some sense as commentary because America has had a long and complicated history concerning the same. But if the X Men can make a better commentary about how atypical people can form friendships, in spite of how different they all were, and that was in the mid '60s, the American magical scene falls a little short here. Diet commentary feels weird, especially when we're contrasting all that with a line like. The robes of Ilvermorny are blue and cranberry. The colors honor Isolde and James. Blue because it was Isolde's favorite color, and because she had wished to be in Ravenclaw House as a child. Cranberry in honor of James's love of cranberry pie. Is there really commentary going on at the same time here? I can't tell where I'm supposed to go with this. America is also kind of a land opposed to the boarding school. How many of them do we have? Three? Well, okay, but being an American, I wouldn't think of a boarding school first. This is the land of Blackboard Jungle and Saved by the Bell. Public education is huge, and it's nothing like British public school. The American public school has been actually valued by the state since the beginning of the United States, and the government has always tried to provide for public education. Private education in America has reputations of preps and Catholic girls. You know how they go with the varsity sweaters around the neck and little blue skirts. But I'm pretty sure most of the kids still go home at the end of the day. The American school stereotype comes from the little red schoolhouse and not the boarding school. Not to mention the boarding school is an imperial thing, and we're a bunch of rebels against the crown here. Next point: Why would the American school end up being called Ilvermorny? I get the story, but I don't know. It's a magical name, and the backstory is great. But 
America is the land of the Joneses and the Smiths and the Washingtons and the Lincolns, especially those two in February. In the end, though, it's just a slice of the old world hidden up in the hills. A diet Hogwarts, if you will. Again, I'm not dissing the creative choices, but it feels a little out of place to have a castle boarding school in America. Ever seen Hearst Castle? That's unusual for this part of the world. A part of the world where, for three months out of the year, kids weren't allowed to keep their magical tools with them until 1965, I might add. A better fitting name for a less exclusive seeming institution like I'm thinking of would have been like... Lordston or something? Something sufficiently New England, because that's where the school is. All the town names there end in Stun or Berg or Ville. And on top of that, Americans tend to make things needlessly verbose in the wrong ways. So for schools, it'd be Mount St. Mary's Sacred Heart College for Girls, or better yet, Charles Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. So after that model, pick a magical figure, add a bunch of fluff to conceal the truth, and there you have it, a New England magical boarding school name. So here we go. The Livingston Bagglepuss Apothecarian Academy of New England. Bam. There it is. There's your fancy private magical school that you have to have the high test scores to get into. And I bet they're the bane of the Quidditch field. Get it? Bane? Yeah, I know. As for the smaller scale, I'd be hard-pressed to think that there weren't smaller magical high schools, maybe with specialized curriculums, like some that focused on charms and divination, and others on potion-making and maybe medical magic. Honestly, I think Key and Peel got it right. There would be poor inner-city magic schools with Quidditch players on Enchanted Swiffers. The schools would also be preparing students for magic college, because the owls were based on A-levels and B-levels and all that nonsense that's in England. All we have are SATs and ACTs. You have to be in college or beyond to take the very more specific tests. And I also think the way our government works, there'd probably be a Bureau of Magic that censors all the school records so that they can receive public funding or something. Again, the spirit of the Little Red School House and the higher accessibility of the population to education comes into play here. That and this is the land of J. Edgar Hoover, the National Treasure movies, the Freemasons, and the like. We all think our government is keeping secrets from us. And you can read it all in the Weekly World News, which was probably a wizarding newspaper disguised as an entertainment piece. Huh? Huh? Also, the one thing that actually pisses me off the most is Ilvermorny has houses. This is obviously an attempt at giving American fans their own Hogwarts equivalents, but this is America. We can't be trusted with multiple mascots per school. That just causes trouble. If anything, there should just be one house, the whole school. Because if you're going to Bagglepuss a cad, you probably worked pretty hard to be a mangy badger or whatever the mascot would be. Bagglepuss badger, snarl snap, pounce! Unless there's no other magical academy, there's no other magical point in segregating the students even more. Also, the parents would probably sue if the kids were being treated wrongly for having been sorted into a house of kids that gets bullied. Because this is America. Land of the free, home of the lawyer. Now, this is only scratching the surface and looking to culture from at least a late 20th century perspective. I didn't even mention historical treatment of race or the American Indians and how they probably had a very different and possibly more spiritual understanding of magic than the western style Potterverse wizards would. I think the whole thing underestimates American culture using a couple of old stories relayed through too many Chinese whispers. The founder of the school came over on the Mayflower and sought to remake the best of the old world in the new which is against the very spirit of America, spirit of newness, of change, where anybody can be anything, barring a few factors, we're working on that. On top of it all, it capitalizes very heavily on the success of Harry Potter and its world, using the same model to perhaps garner fans' attention or comprehension more quickly, which means it might just fizzle out more quickly. Hopefully not before November when the movie comes out, right? But in any case, I welcome challenges to my perspective. If anybody has a defense of the Ilvermornius canon, 
wants me to expand on any point that I've made here with more details or has anything they want to say at all about this Hogwarts stuff, please comment or send me a message through my social media. All the links will be in the description below. I do tend to gloss in these videos, but please feel free to call me out. Or if you agree with me and want to apply to Bagglepuss, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. But for now, bye bye Oh, and one last thing. No madges is a hard thing to say. Ilvermorny is hard enough for the American tongue, but j and s are too close to the same sound. So if you say it fast, it either becomes no magis, like with an extra i, or no magis, with no vowel at all. Little thing. I should probably read American Gods. Also, I'm not against the story here or anything, and it's not my world to really care about. I'm just sitting here as an American, looking at something that's supposed to be in America, but feels foreign to me. Also, if anybody asks, I'm apparently a Thunderbird, which means... Five, four, three, two, one. Apart by Badgers!